welcome to this tutorial about Photoshop masks. Um, I'm only going to be covering what would be considered a pixel mask rather than a vector mask, um, which includes the quick mask mode, layer masks, and channels, because I am not experienced in vector masks nearly enough to educate you guys on it without making myself look like a total butt. So, um, first of all, let's do quick mask mode. Um, you can, come on, uh, enable it over here, edit in quick mask mode, or select edit in quick mask mode. So, double click it, and here are your options. Color indicates masked areas or selected areas. Um, it's defaulted to masked areas. So this color here will be covering everything that is not selected. Um, and it is defaulted to red at 50% opacity. Um, oh, I gotta stop saying um. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it as, as defaults to make this as easy enough to understand so I'm not like, you know, changing things around and you're like, why isn't my Photoshop similar to this? Because I know I have that problem watching my friends do crap on securejoin.me fun program anyways so it's not really going to change anything you'll notice well I enabled it um, in channels you have this layer here called quick mask mode um, it's just an all white layer um, basically that's all you see so let's undo it and then let's select this eye with the polygonal lasso and if you're wondering about this photo, I drew it on a base um, quite a while ago, actually, and I just felt like using it. Anyways, so now you go to Edit in Quick Mask Mode, and you will see everything but the selection is now red. And if you go over to the layers channels, you can see the quick mask mode. And if you click the eye to make RGB invisible, thus red, green, and blue channels invisible as well, you can see a black and white version of the quick mask. And you can of course edit it here, but uh, you're not really going to see what you're going to what you're doing as well as you edit here. Just make sure it's selected when you're editing it and not the other ones in case you go over there to check it out. Um, so you can of course I'm gonna deselect her pupil to show you guys so the black would be the red and the white reveals the true c color so white selects black deselects by default and you can take the brush tool and go in with black and you know go into the eye and just do this however you feel like doing it like that basically or you can use the polygonal lasso tool um, I wouldn't use the other selection tools because they're going to cling to the lines of the quick mask because you have that channel selected rather than the picture. So just use a polygonal lasso or the pen tool if you prefer. And then I'm just going to fill that with black. Okay. Um, you can see over in channels that it changed. And then when I click out of quick mask mode, this is my new selection. I make a new layer. Um, and you can see the new selection I created. That looks really creepy. Anyways. So that is basically, in essence, the quick mask mode. Um, you can, of course, here we go. Once you make a selection, you can use filters on it. Like, you can blur it if you want, you know, a blur that you can't get with with refining the mask or uh, or feathering it via Modify Feather or Right Click Feather. Where is it? There we go, Right Click Feather. Um, you can even use any filter that would work on just black and white as well. So, one I really like is to do pixelate color halftone. 
um, you're not going to be able to, you know, see a preview of it, so you're really going to have to mess around, but basically default settings, it makes those little comic book circles, basically. So let me get out a quick mask mode, new layer, color that in, see, it has those interesting things. That it doesn't look good there, but I like it to make a border, so that's, you know, what you can do with quick mask mode. Um, the next one I'm going to show you about, well I already introed it to a little bit, is channels. So again, let's do something easy that only take a second to select. You can now create a new channel and then fill it with white like you would the quick mask mode. You want the selection to be white. Um, if you select it in gray, uh, depending on how much gray it is, uh, will be varying opacity. So 50% gray, oh wait, 50% opacity. Deselect. Now, say you want that, you go back to RGB, you know, it's not there, but you want it. Um, because you're, this is great if you're selecting multiple items on a picture and don't want to worry about deselecting them, or if you want to save a, um, a selection for later, you can go over here to load channel as selection. What's this? Oh yeah, save selection and channel, which we already did. Um, but yeah, that load channel as selection makes the selection so when you go back to RGB, there it is. Now, the last bit of info I'm going to give you is with layer masks. And so, let me just copy this image adjustments invert. It's going to look really weird, but Okay, so anyways, um, this will allow you to see exactly what I'm doing better. So basically, I'm just going to go over here and add layer mask. And this basically works over here as a quick selection. So everything is showing because it's white. Now if I add black, it erases it, basically. It deselects it. So basically, this works as a great, you know, if you're adding an element to a photo and you don't want to actually erase it because you might make a mistake, this is a great way to do it. Or you can, then of course you can go to make a selection and then fill it so it shows through. Okay, let me get some of her skin so you can see that better. There we go. Um, you can double click the picture and then say stroke and it'll work as if you erased it so it's not going to mess with you know any layer styles you use um, and also if you double click the layer mask thumbnail you get this properties thing in Photoshop CS4 I believe it is and newer uh, I'm not sure about elements, sadly, but um, the density, you know, basically the opacity, and then the feather is how soft the edge is. So that is super, super handy. Now the next thing I'm going to show you that relates to that is, and I'm just going to make a new layer, image adjustments, invert. Okay. Um, now, if you go, well, I should show what I'm going to, go to Create Fill or Adjustment Layer in any of these, which is basically what you're going to get if you go to Image Adjustments, basically the same things except for you also have Solid Color, Gradient, and Pattern, these will all work on the same dynamic as the Layer Mask, so if I say Pattern, uh, let me use that one because you can really see it. You can, it fills the pattern only in that area, or the gradient, or the color, or, you know, 
the levels, brightness, contrast, curves, hue, saturation, any of these. And the great part about this is you can double click that and then you can change it. You change the scale. Um, you can double click that in the CS4 and above and get the properties again so you can feather it. It works just like the other mask where you can click on the mask itself and blur it. That looks kind of neat actually. And you know you have a lot of options. You can still double click on, if you don't click on either thumbnail just on the layer itself, you can still get um, you know like stroke and whatnot as far as layer styles and then you can just merge it down to use it and it stays. Um, you can of course also edit it with you know the simple black and white again. So just click on the layer mask thumbnail and you know go in with either black or white to expand or retract it. And that is really really great for doing uh, hue saturation and such because you can like change it like say I want her to have purple hair get that color and then go into the mask and just return the rest of it to normal see what I mean? I love that it totally makes me happy <laughs> um, this is great for everything really um, I find I use it so much it's so handy so that is the quick mask mode, the uh, layer mask, the channels. Oh, one thing I should also include. So that's I'm just going to delete that. Is the RGB channels. Um, the RGB channel, or if you go to image mode and change these to the other ones, you're going to have different names, but. Um, it isolates different colors. Uh, well, I believe this one gets rid of the red, this one gets rid of the green, that one gets rid of the blue. I'm having trouble to uh, describing it right now. <laughs> but um, the nice thing about this is if you say their hair is really, really dark in this one and I really want to only select the hair, you know, like in a regular photograph. Actually, let me show you a regular photograph. Okay, so here's a photo of me. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, uh, this is going to be the photo I'm going to use. It doesn't have a whole lot of contrast from the foreground and background, so that's going to make it a little more challenging. But, so what I usually like to do if I'm going to be using the channels to select the background is duplicate the layer. Image adjustments levels. I don't mind. I don't bother doing this on a mask because I'm just going to delete this layer once I get a selection, and I'm just going to mess with the brightness. So that's a bit different. It doesn't look good as an edit, but it's not the problem. And I'm going to go to red, green, and blue, and see which has the more most foreground and background uh, contrast. And it seems red does, even though the skin is really, really light. Um, the background is much easier to tell between the background and the hair. So, click it and drag it to the create new channel, and that will create, you know, a copy of the red, and then image adjustments levels, yet again you know, brightness and contrast, whatever you have to do to get a change. So I'm going to try to make her hair light, well, my hair light and skin and clothing light and the background dark and um, I can always invert it when I'm done if I want the other selected. So to do that I'm just going to use the burn and dodge tools. Dodging on shadows, so and then I'm just going to burn shadows on the background. Then 
you know, back to levels and brightness and contrast. Okay, so once you're close, just go in with the brush tool. I would leave any gaps in the hair that um, are caused by bits of hair coming up. You can always check that by clicking RGB again and seeing what's up. And of course you can use, you know, the smudge tools and sharpen tools and whatever you feel you need to use. Okay, so once you have your basic selection, you can go over to a load channel of selection, then deselect it. It's definitely not perfect. You're going to have a lot better results if you do a photo with high foreground background contrast. You can use, I'm just going to put a solid color in there. There you go. So that's one of the ways you can use masks to select really, really hard to select areas. Um, obviously it didn't do great, but it didn't do bad. I mean, look at the shoulders and some of the hair. You could always go back and like re redo it, but at least you don't have to like select the entire thing. So, well, I hope that helped. Um, I'll try to 